Okay, I received this question the other day and that was how do you assess for a DVT in a spinal cord injury patient on the clinical exam? So here's the thing, I really don't think they're gonna ask you that. If they're gonna ask you to assess for a DVT, they're gonna ask you it for a patient who is like post-op or who hasn't mobilized for a few days. They're not gonna get you to do that on a spinal injury patient, spinal cord injury patient. However, I do think there are some really good verbal questions that could come from this. So I'm gonna give you two verbal questions that I want you to prepare for when you're thinking about a DVT and a spinal cord injury patient. Okay, question one that I want you to prepare for for a verbal follow-up question is, how would you assess for a DVT in a spinal cord injury patient? So the big thing you need to remember here is these patients aren't gonna have sensation. So our normal flow of the DVT jack is gonna be slightly different. So we do have our DVT framework that we give you in the clinical course, but for a patient that has a spinal cord injury, we're removing everything sensation-wise. So all we're going to do is we're going to inspect the area, and that means you need to expose and open up your legs. And then the other part that you're gonna do is you're just gonna palpate for any redness. Other than that, that's all you're going to do. Okay, and question two is going to be, why are patients with a spinal cord injury more at risk of a DVT? And this is just due to lack of mobility or their immobility. And when you don't move, what can happen is you have stasis in the blood, in the veins, in the legs. And when you have this, this increases the risk of a DVT or blood clot. 